Okay. Uh, so yeah, like I said, the next video is going to be um, what we're going to see today. We're going to see the Dilibet overview of like her buffs and whatnot and, and kind of see how satisfied we are with them, see how you know far I've, like what I've used her for and how, how she's performed uh, since the buffs. Cause it's been a few months, I think. I think maybe a month, maybe two months since she got buffed, something like that. I don't know. I'm, I, I can't keep track of dates these days anymore. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to talk about how she's been, um, how she compares to what I said in my previous video. We're going to reference that a little bit. Um, and we're just going to go uh, over her kit, uh, her build, and all kinds of other stuff, uh, where her place is in the meta and whatnot, and what kind of effects it's had on her. Uh, so yeah, let's just kind of dive in here. We're going to start with the S1, uh, because basically what I said in the original video was you can't do anything to the S1 because it's already overloaded. Um, yeah, so it's got too much stuff going on. Again, a silence with defense scaling with the 25% uh, fighting spirit. It's not too, too much. There are a bunch of other S1s that are a little more powerful than this, but there's just a lot going on. It's just like, it's got a lot of utility that like, you can't add anything to this. You can't be like, okay, we're going to give her this on top of that because uh, it's not, you know, it's going to make it too strong at that point. Um, and you can't really tweak the number. 75 is already really high for a silence. Um, not that the silence is very useful because you don't run effectiveness on her, but every so often you get it. Uh, the defense scaling, of course, is where her main damage comes from, so it's pretty decent. Um, but yeah, like I said, so you can't. There's not a whole lot you can do with the S1. Um, it's already kind of as far as you can go. Putting more stuff on, it's going to make it a little too strong. But you know, what are you can do? Uh, next, we're going to talk about her uh, S3 because uh, the S2 is the main thing here. But the S3 got a little bit of bonus. Uh, got the 15% CR push for your entire team. This actually is. At first, when I when the when the buff was being announced, and then when I got her, at first I was just assuming that this fifteen percent CR was kind of like, who cares? You know, it's it's whatever. Like I it's, I can't be asked. Uh, but it's actually a lot more useful than you might think because it allows her to like, sometimes when she S threes. So let's we have to kind of stack the um, the events here. So let's kind of like go through a scenario. Sometimes they bring in two debuffers, and one debuffer goes gets enough debuffs so that her S2 goes off and then she pushes forward. Now it's her turn and the second debuffer doesn't go. So you're left with a question, do I S3 or do I wait to come back around the second time and then S3 once the second debuffer goes? This kind of gives you both options, makes both options viable. You can either wait again for the wait for her turn to cycle back, then activate this to get rid of all the debuffs in general, or you can let the first debuffer go obviously because if you're running her, you're kind of going turn two. The first debuffer goes, she comes in, she cuts, uh, cleanses everything, pushes everyone forward. Everyone's cleansed now, and it's the, it's most of your team's turn. They all get to, you know, S3, and then whatever debuffs comes after, it's okay because everyone's S3'd already, right? Um, so it kind of gives you that option. So you can either, because before the original thing was like if two debuffers went and then she cleared, she, she cut in between them. You had to wait for her to cycle all the way around because the next debuffer was going to come. So if you cleanse them all now, the second debuffer is just going to make that irrelevant um, so this kind of makes it viable either way right because uh, most of the time like the games are won on like the first round where everyone s threes and then after that it's like you know but yeah so that, that's kind of this this ended up being a little more useful than i had originally uh, thought personally um and i think i even mentioned that i thought like a cr push would be useful uh, and you know there you go it was good like i said that that when i added the cr push here it was just kind of a throwaway line in terms of like oh you could just give her that if you wanted to give her something here um but i wasn't actually serious and the fact that they put it in there was like okay well i'm not going to complain obviously it's it's useful uh, so now we're going to go over to like the the big you know the biggest change and the most the most influential change the one change that's going to make her more viable in general um and that's the s2 change so before we got five fighting spirit, now we have basically double, I mean, not basically, but literally double that fighting spirit, which is a good thing. It just allows her to cycle a lot more often. It allows her to like get her defense buff up, which increases damage and survivability. Um, yeah, I mean, there's really not a whole lot else to say. Like this 10%, I think they might've bu buffed this right here and they changed the wording. So it said, uh, yeah, so whenever a turn, whenever someone's turn ends and she has full fighting spirit, she she triggers it. Now it's just whenever she has full fighting spirit, she doesn't have to wait till end of turn or something like that. I think it used to be like an enemy's turn because you know otherwise I don't know. The point being that the wording was changed so they can trigger like intermittently at proper times, at better times, where before like certain con like one condition had to be met and then the finally triggered, which is kind of annoying. But now it's just whenever you get that, she triggers this. 
Um, and this this single handedly solves again. They gave her the defense buff, which that's exactly what I had said. Either give her a defense buff or a Landy's type uh, defense stacking thing. Um, I pre- I would have preferred the defense stacking, the Landy defense stacking thing, because that way it's permanent. Right, and you don't have to worry about like getting debuffed or having it cleansed or stripped. Because if you're fighting, if you're fighting against um, debuffers, this defense buff is going to get stripped constantly, most of the time. But again, most of the time it's it's up, so it's not that big a deal. You don't have to worry about it. It's just it would have been nicer to have that Landy treatment here, and then give her a defense buff on top of that of her stacking uh, defense, and then just, she just hits way too hard. Right, I, like I said, it would have been nice. Um, is it the worst thing ever that she doesn't have it? No, it's fine. Um, but yeah, so basically I want to talk about this S3 because this S3 kind of solves everything she needed. What Dilibet's, what Dilibet's, what Dilibet needs as a warrior, uh, unit is she needs speed, uh, damage and survivability. This S2 single-handedly gives her all of those things. The defense buff not only covers her defense, like her survivability, but it also gives her more damage, like by a huge amount, especially depending on your build. And then on top of that, you get the 40% CR push constantly, right? Now, because you have 10 per uh, thing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, there's, like, this buff is exactly what she needed. And, you know, <laughs> what else could you want from this point on? Um, but, yeah, so like I said, this, I think uh, these changes were all what I predicted in that original video. Um, I, I'm just going to, like, I'm not going to pretend like they watched my video, but I'm just going to say, like, no one else was talking about Dilibet at the time. Like, everyone mentioned her in passing. Like, they would just say that she sucks, which she kind of did. I mean, she wasn't, like, the worst, but um, she didn't really do enough. Uh, but now, you know, now she's a lot stronger. Um, yeah. So the other thing is, yeah, so that, that's that. Um, like I said, this S2 single-handedly just gave her everything she needed, uh, all three of those things. Uh, so let's take a look at the build. I had her on counter set before. The reason I had her on counter set was because it took too long to gain stacks off of this on its own. So I decided to give her a counter set so she can get a, a 25% boost from this, right? That was kind of the thought process. You can still run her on counter set. I think that's still fine, but I prefer to have more damage. Um, and, you know, like I said, yeah, more damage and more speed, which the counter set I couldn't facilitate too well. Uh, but yeah, the counter set's still 100% viable. Uh, getting this up is a lot better. It's pretty good, uh, given how easily like she just gets this and then she gets the counters. It's like it's ridiculous. She's just gonna be cycling constantly. Um, but yeah, like I said, I prefer the damage. I wanted to get as much as, as I could out of her because um, a lot of times like she can win fights just straight up with like they 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 hit you with debuffs. She cleanses them, pushes forward, defense buff S3. And she could just nuke the whole team. Like, the whole team gets wiped with one S3. It's possible. Not always, but sometimes, you know, sometimes um, they're a little tankier. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, I prefer to have the damage and the speed. Um, so, yeah, now let's get into the builds. Like I said, I, I put her on, on crit damage set. Um, again, the the, deep, the the counter set is 100% viable still, but this is what I'm going with. The attack is a little high. I'd like to drop it a bit. There's some pieces that um, have attack that don't need attack, I think. Like this has 15% attack. That could be health or something. Um, but I'm not going to switch it over just because this piece has such a good gear score. I think so. I don't I don't remember exactly. I'm not going to calculate it here. But I think some of these have good gear scores. Some of them don't. They're kind of crap. Like this one, I think it's kind of crap. Yeah, this is kind of crap. Um, but anyway, the point being that uh, these are the stats I have her at. Again, the attack is a little too high. I'd, I'd like to lower that in favor of more defense. Uh, the health is pretty good. If I get more health or more defense, either one is fine just to make her tankier. Uh, the speed is nice. Um, again, she's not that fast. You don't need her to be like 200 speed because like the faster you make her, the less you get out of this, right? Because if she's already like 20% before it's her turn and this triggers, then you wasted half of the boost, right? So you kind of want her in a middle ground of like not too fast, but not too slow uh, to get full effect out of that. Again, it's random chance where when she gets to trigger it on the CR bar, but you know, just hopefully this, you know, with this speed, it's, it's, it's a decent mix. Um, 98% crit chance, of course, I can give her, um, I have three slates, I can give her a slate, uh, and then we're up to 100% crit chance, but I'm just waiting until I get another copy of her, just because I don't want to waste a slate on a regular green unit, on a regular, like, RGB unit that I can get. Um, but yeah, and then lastly, we have the uh, crit damage, which is about 330. Uh, I think 330 is, like, the max, because I can't get any more crit damage any, out of any of these pieces. Yeah. Uh, maybe this one, but I think that's max. I think it's a max rolled, uh, 
re-roll there, but I'm not sure. But yeah. Anyway, the point being that three about 330 is fine. Um, the only thing that you can debate, I think, well, I mean, you can debate the whole bill, but like to me, the only thing I'm kind of uh, wondering whether I should, what I should do with, uh, I don't actually have it here right now. Yeah, I have them all used up right now. Uh, is I've seen her on um, Sigurd Scythe before, and I think that's a pretty decent idea because she can just full heal off the S3. And the S1 does a decent amount of healing just because if she heals, she can hit like 8,000 on an S1, right? Sigurd Scythe gives you 50% um, healing back if she's under 50, right? Uh, but 50%, so she ha she heals 4,000 HP off of that. Because her defense is so high, it scales your... The, the higher someone's defense is, the more it scales your lifesteal, right? So basically, again, we can use simple math here. Let's pretend she has enough defense um, to basically cut damage in half. When you heal for a certain amount, you're basically healing for double on her compared to another unit, right? Um, like I said, the, the math doesn't work out that way exactly because this isn't like half damage or whatever. But you know, you can kind of think of it that way for simpler terms. So because she has such high defense, lifesteal uh, works exceptionally well on her. And she does scale pretty good with defense compared to, because I was comparing her numbers to um, Lionheart Shermia, who also scales with defense. Uh, and her numbers scale a little better with attack, so I don't mind the attack so much, but I'd like to trade it for something else. Um, but Sigurd Scythe, again, the, the, the attack bonus that you get from Sigurd Scythe is definitely very useful. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, uh, I think she's pretty good so far. I've been using her in basically everything. Um, it, the buffs in RTA kind of make it so you don't get like your more general use purpose because back then, if you were playing RTA and they picked like two debuffers and then, well, you got, you got baited into picking Lilibet or not, not baited, but like, okay, well in that situation, I'm picking Lilibet back then she wasn't enough to counter a team with two debuffers. If they had three, then you were more solid in that situation and you could do a lot more because there's more debuffs going around and their team is heavily based on the debuffs. But now, if they have two debuffers, she does pretty good. And then if they have one, it's not... Obviously, you're not going to want to, like, don't bring her into just one. But, like, if they pick one in the start and then, you know, they, they pick no debuffers all the way down um, and then they pick one at the end, well, then you can just ban the one at the end and let the first one go through and she could still be decent... Uh, but, like, the point is that now she's just, like, she's almost an auto-win against two. Uh, but, one, you're still iffy. And people are kind of moving away from debuffers just because we got things like Ramiru and, um, what's her name? Uh, Hua Yung. But, yeah, like, overall, I think she's pretty good. I mean, back then, like I said, it was like a 50-50 whether she could win against two debuffers at once. But now it's almost, like, guaranteed. And then, like I said, if they have two debuffers, they're not going to be as tanky. Uh, so then you just sit there and just stomp on him with her. Like, her S3 can just deal so much damage on the turn one. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I like where she's at. I like the defense, uh, the, the defense, the... I like the critical hit damage from this. So she's basically at 360. And then, uh, of course, the damage mitigation from this on top of her, uh, def her high defense is just a good combination. So it just makes her really hard to die. Uh, but like I, saying, like I was saying, I think Sigurd Scythe is going to be another very strong contender for her, and I'll have to experiment with it over time, but I feel like, yeah, I don't know, I'll have to, I'll have to see. Um, but yeah, I think that I'm, obviously I'm satisfied with her buffs just because they basically took my video and, and, and buffed her according to my video. Now, am I saying that li they literally did that? They actually watched my video? Nah, probably not. I don't actually think they watched my video, but... Um, they basically just did everything that was in the video, whether they watched it or not. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I'm personally happy about it. I've been using her everywhere. Um, she's a lot of fun to use. Um, Meta-wise, kind of overall big picture, um, I think the problem is she's still not as good as ML Calric because here's the deal. Her designer a little bit, when she's fighting against debuffers, um, she punishes them by herself so she has a lot of strength by herself and then like you can kind of wor not worry about the rest of the team the, the rest of the team is debuffed and it's like okay whatever and she can just kind of go off and do her own thing and she usually helps you win in that way the thing about ml calric is that ml calric is basically just immune to being shut down by debuffs so that he brings your whole team so it's like if i'm like if she's in a team fighting against debuffers the whole team gets debuffed and then she's the only one fighting with ml calric he's so good at what he does that he basically liberates the entire team and now everyone can just stomp on the other team right because they have attack buff and everything 
is it work out that way 100%? Not exactly, just because there's so much like, um, like, what's her name? Uh, I forgot her name. Paul, uh, the, the, not Politis. Um, I can't believe I forgot her name. The, the ML Politis, right? The ML Politis. I, I have her name. I just don't remember what it is. The light tank with the count, the AOE counters. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank there. But anyway, just because of people like her, people like Rem, where they just clear debuffs constant or clear buffs constantly, reduces the the usefulness of that immunity set. Um, but the fact that it's just like together, and he has a pretty decent skill set on top of that anyway, just makes him so much stronger in general. Um, but again, like I said, depending it depends on the drafts and all that stuff. But I think Cap Memel Calric still has more usefulness than she does, and I think in the long run he's gonna make it out like. He's just going to be a lot better. Um, that being said, it, like ML Cowrick is coming soon, and Dilibet is also coming later on. In like, because they had that like um, calendar of what's coming in the MML summons. If I had to choose between one or the other, I would still choose ML Cowrick. I think from an objective standpoint, uh, but from a subjective standpoint, from my standpoint, I would choose Dilibet over ML Cowrick just because I like the way Dilibet plays. I don't like ML Calric fundamentally just because he's a really boring unit to play as and use. Um, but I do like Dilibet. So if you were to ask me, I would choose Dilibet between the two. But I would acknowledge that it's not the best choice. It's just the choice I want to make. Um, so keep that in mind for those of you who are deciding whether you're going to pick Dilibet or you're going to pick ML Calric. Uh, you'd probably be much better served with ML Calric. But again, ML Calric is boring and kind of safe. Um, but that's kind of what wins. Um, that's what wins RTA, right? Boring and safe. Um, so there you go. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think she's going to be strong, uh, not as strong. I think the other problem that I want to mention is how many people are running around with um, Hua Young, especially like Hua Young constantly. Her S3 doesn't always one-shot Designer a little bit. However, um, the fact that she usually runs Ubiard's Tooth and her S1 just triggers that um, extra attack-based uh, damage, it penetrates defense, which basically means that it's almost doing true damage to her and because she has to invest in defense her health kind of suffers so she's not as like you know she's a little more vulnerable to her again ml cowrick is a little more vulnerable because she just s3's ml cowrick and he dies um but dilibet it's a 50 50 whether she'll s3 her and she'll die i think most of the time she'll die um but again if she doesn't if she can use the s3 on someone else and then just s1 her to death and she'll die really fast because not only does this do nothing because it's not a critical hit damage again her all the investment you're dumping into her defense stat is basically irrelevant right that's kind of the problem there um again not not just him but you've got things like um like him uh ramiru is good at dealing uh true damage uh who else there was a few other ones here uh i don't know i'm not gonna go through all of them but like obviously people like what's her name uh where is she uh, like her, like even her, right? She's not gonna, the debuffs aren't gonna stick, but she could still hit you for 50% de defense, eh, 50% def pen, which is like, you know, it's a huge deal when you've invested so much gear into defense. She basically turns designer a little bit into a 900 defense unit, sub 1000, basically one shotable at 1500 HP or 15,000 HP, right? Um, so keep that in mind, like all these units, I mean, you know, obviously what's her name here? Um, Little Queen Charlotte is always a threat. Like, she's never not a threat to dark units. Uh, not only that, but you I don't have him, but you have, like, um, what's her name? <sighs> ML Shermia, right? Uh, not only do you have elemental advantages there, but you also have things like, uh, what's his name? The, um, uh, you know, Riolu. Um, so, in general, just be wary of when you're bringing her into stuff. Um, like I said, problematically, you're dealing with a lot of, like, Def pen stuff built in already, and uh, she doesn't really do very well against that. But like I said, overall, I'm happy with where she is. She's 100% more usable. I think these days I'm probably going to switch her over to Sigurd Scythe and she see how she does on that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see how she does on that, and I might you know say something in one of the Guild War videos or something like that. Uh, but I'm, I'm switching back and forth between the two. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you if you get her, I mean, congrats, you've got a pretty fun unit. I, like I said, I think she's a lot more fun than ML Calric, but uh, ultimately, I think ML Calric is a lot more meta impactful. And and if you're if you're playing only for the meta, I think ML Calric is going to serve you a lot better. Um, but like I said, 
I've been having a lot of fun with her, and I'm, I'm grateful to get these buffs. And hopefully I can make more videos in the future talking about uh, more characters like her. Uh, kind of middle ground, like, oh, they're, they're kind of decent, but they could be better characters I enjoy using. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see if... Uh, We'll see if Epic Seven decides to take any of that advice and and do the same thing they did with Designer a little bit, uh, just kind of basically make them my dream unit. Um, well, she's not my dream unit. She's more like my dream average unit, right? Because like she's not as like good as I'd want her to be. But like that video was meant to be more conservative, more like this is what they would do. What you know compared to what I would want them to do, um, just because I know like balancing is an issue. Like if we if if, if if I had my way, I'd make her like way stronger and, and all kinds of other stuff, right? I mean, but the point isn't to like just make them overpowered. It's to like make them relevant. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's that's mainly it. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is just this um this one turn cooldown decrease is actually a lot more impactful than a lot of people give it credit for. Um, it's a debuff that she can inflict that doesn't inflict a debuff. It's not cleansable. So if you just hit people again, immunity kind of immunity obviously shuts that down a lot. Um, but not everyone's running immunity these days. They should be, right? But uh, apparently, I mean, I don't agree with this, but apparently some people are saying that immunity is not 100% the way to go just because Ramiru is in the meta. Um, but I think that's dumb. I think nerfing all of your units for immunity just because Ramiru is going to hit you decently hard is kind of stupid, but I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a Legend player, so I can't really comment on that 100%, but that just seems kind of dumb. But anyway... If no one's running, if people are kind of dropping a lot of immunity sets, uh, this S1 is really good because you basically give your whole team that cleanse all the debuffs from your team, push them up forward. Now it's their turn to S3. She goes and she hits and she removes, uh, reduces one of their cooldown or increases their cooldown by one. So their turn comes and they don't have any S3s to go off. And, you know, basically a whole turn is wasted, right? So, like I said, this, this, uh, I mean, that, that wasn't new, right? That's been there for a while, but, um, given that I've been using her a lot more now because of her buffs, like that, that, that one turn increase has been really like crazy in terms of like how useful it is. Uh, but yeah, like I said, other than that, um, I think that's the main thing. Um, counter set, like I said, counter set is still viable on her, um, but I think you probably want as much damage as you can. I run crit chance set because there's really nothing else you can run. I mean, you can run like effectiveness set, but like um, you don't really need effectiveness that much for this and you don't need effectiveness for the silence. It's kind of whatever. Um, you can run pen set, but that's only going to give you more damage on this. And it's like, mm, I don't know. It's up to you. Um, immunity set, obviously, she doesn't really need it because she's got this. You can if you want to, but personally, I don't really, I, I wouldn't use it on her. Um, and the only other thing would be like a defense set. Like the only other, yeah, the only thing, other thing I'd probably run is like a defense set on her. However, I don't have good enough defense pieces to like make her this good with a defense set. Like, if I could, I probably would, and then maybe, like, if she could have this much crit chance, crit, da crit damage, and then 2,000 defense, that'd be pretty fantastic to me. But, yeah, take that as you will. Uh, but, yeah, so hopefully you guys are all enjoying Dilibet, and, uh, like I said, I'm not sure what the next video is going to be. This is as far as I had planned. Um, we'll see what the next one is, and um, hopefully i kind of probably going to make another video, like, talking about a unit, but I don't want to force that, like, just pick a unit. Like, I, like, I picked Dilibet because I used Dilibet before a lot. And I kind of knew what I was talking about when I was talking about her. Uh, and I and nobody was talking about Dilibet at all. So, like, I was like, well, those three things align. Let me just kind of get in there and, and give my two cents. And, and I did. And here we are. Uh, so, like I said, I, I want to do more of that content. But, like, the amount of units that I want to use and enjoy using are, like, limited, right? Um, but I guess that's a good thing, right? Um, yeah, so until next time, we'll see what the next video is.